What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to show you around my tank, which is now 18 months old. I'm gonna talk you through all the good and bad things that have happened recently, and I'm gonna tell you about my nutrient levels, and of course I'll show you some of the growth I've been getting. The purpose of all of this is to show you roughly what a reef tank might look like after 18 months. Now if this is your first time here, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, let's get to the tank. So first up then, I'll tell you about my fish stock. Now I did recently get a Scarus Koi, which is by reputation, a reef safe parrotfish. In the wild, parrotfish eat stony corals, then poop them out to make sand. That's actually how the beaches in Hawaii are made. True story. The Scarus Koi though is supposed to be different, and most places you read say they're fine with corals. But this guy decided to sharpen his beak on some of my favorite SPS. So I put the fish trap in and returned him to my LFS after only a week. In my opinion, it's absolutely worth taking a punt on a fish that's considered reef safe with caution, so long as you're prepared to catch and remove it if it goes rogue. And that leaves me with 27 fish in total, which is getting very close to full capacity. My philosophy with fish is that you can have as many as you want, subject to space, aggression and bioload. And I've added these fish fairly steadily over time, rather than adding several in the space of a few weeks. If I had algae issues along the way, or if my corals started looking off, I'd have backed off the volume of fish. And very few of my fish have reached full size, so I still might have to rehome some of them in years to come. I also tend to avoid aggressive fish, or fish that won't get on with similar looking fish. But with that being said, I do have three hawkfish and two blennies. And there was a fair chance they wouldn't get on, as they're all very similar. Two of the three hawks have been together for over a year now without any trouble, but I've only added the falco hawk today, and the long nose doesn't seem too impressed, and has chased him away a couple of times, so I'll see how they get on before reporting back. The two blennies seem to be okay, although the Midas will chase the tail spot if he ventures into the Midas' favourite parking spots. So I'd be reluctant to mix those fish in a tank much smaller than this four footer, or a tank with fewer hiding places in the rockwork. But the blennies are such great characters that it's worth the risk for me. Despite being from the same genus, they're actually very different characters. The Midas is very sociable and spends a lot of his time swimming around in the open, whereas the tail spot is more of a lone wolf and can either be found in a cave somewhere or pecking algae off the rockwork. I recently moved a frag rock that the Midas blenny uses for cover, and he then spent the next couple of days tidying up the mess I'd created. If I'm honest, it's a little annoying as he dumps the sand onto my corals, but that's easily dealt with, and this is a great example of why I love blennies so much. They have real personalities, and they're great fun to watch. And on that subject, the fish I get asked about the most in the comments section is my Naoko Ras. This is the guy that soars around at the top of the tank like an eagle, then swoops down on the Antheas. He doesn't seem to be aggressive, and he's also got awesome colour and cool fins that he shows off before he dives. He's also totally reef safe and gets on fine with all my other asses. With so many fish, it won't be much of a surprise that my nutrients are quite high. They're currently around 6 parts per million, and my phosphate is sky high at 0.29 parts per million. Nitrates of 6 is more or less ideal as far as I'm concerned, but I would like my phosphates lower. One or two of my corals are starting to go a little brown, or have even bleached out after going brown, which might well be because of the phosphate level. But frankly, everything else is looking so good and growing so well that I'm happy to leave things as they are for now and just monitor the situation. I've also added an extra light recently, so there's every chance the bleaching and browning has been caused by that instead. Almost all of my corals started out life as a one inch frag or smaller. And while I wouldn't say I'm getting rapid growth, my SPS stock is certainly growing at a rate I'm very happy with and is showing awesome colors. I'd say this is probably a fair representation of the growth you should expect to see in a tank at 18 months. On the whole, I haven't had too many issues with corals dying in this tank, although every now and then I find a coral that stung one of its neighbors and I recently removed a hammer coral for that very reason. As I've said, I've also had a few SPS corals lose color, but as far as I'm concerned, that's more or less par for the course with a reef tank. I will of course share my success stories with you on this channel, but I'll also always tell you about the problems I've had, whether that's self-inflicted like me buying fish that don't work out, or telling you about losing my corals. It's easy to see a snapshot of a tank on social media and think it's pristine, but the reality is that's rarely the case, and almost every tank will be hiding some dirty secrets. In my case, fortunately that's currently limited to a few frags browning out and a couple of fish going rogue, but there's always something waiting around the corner. I've taken a lot of footage from top down for this video because corals look so much better when you're not looking through a panel of glass. The Peninsula 500 is a pretty tall tank at 1m60, so I don't often get to see this view, but every now and then I remove the cover, turn off all the pumps and enjoy the colour bomb. 
Doing that is a bit of a hassle as I have to turn off my return pump, skimmer, filter roller and power heads, so at some point I'm going to put all of those onto one plug bar so I can turn them all off and then back on again with one switch. Now I'm a bit of a fish shop addict and on average I usually buy at least one new coral most weeks, but I still have a fair amount of real estate left, which is surprising given the tank's been running for 18 months now. But that's probably partly because I've packed the corals in quite tightly, which looks great for now, but I'll probably have some overcrowding issues a year or two down the line, so I probably would have left more space between them if I started over today. My scape is made up of three islands. The left hand side is starting to grow out a little and has some absolutely banging aquapora, but the upper left hand part has too many similar coloured corals, so it's not my favourite island. Although I plan to rectify that with some really colourful SPS frags in the new year. And there are two or three hidden gems on that island that will help the situation when they grow out. The middle island is my favourite and is more or less finished now, so I'm going to try not to add any more corals and just let it grow out. There's a nice mix of LPS low down and SPS higher up. It also provides a nice little overhang at the front there, which is a favourite spot for my fish to hang out when they want some chill out time. The right hand side is the island I'm least happy with, so it's likely to change over time. I love the Zoa Garden in the middle, so that's here to stay, but the large branching SPS coral to the left will be moving on. It's a bird of paradise hystrix that I bought about six months ago as a small frag. But I've changed my mind, so I'm going to replace it with a nice bushy aquapora of some kind. And I've also ended up with too many similar colour corals on the right hand side of this island, so that needs breaking up with a real centrepiece aquapora. Now just in front of that island is my brand new Goniopora garden. I've only just added these three in the last few weeks, so they're tiny and rather unimpressive at the moment. But they're really nice gonies, and the plan is to let them encrust out and give me some much needed movement in the tank. There's a chance they'll send out sweeper tentacles in the direction of the Zoa garden, but I don't expect that to happen for a long time, so I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. The tank feels about 70% done now, but I've got plenty of work to do before I just let it settle and grow out and I'll keep you updated with how things progress over time. So there you have it then, that is my Peninsula 500 after 18 months. I'd love to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.